Well, hello, YouTube friends. I had a good time with those last, <laughs> what was it, 10 videos I made about my Momo Jones, and I appreciate all the viewers' comments. Uh, real interesting, some of the comments, and uh, seemed like everybody enjoyed those. I was, I was uh, privileged to be able to sit down and make those things. It stretched out a little longer than I meant to. Uh, I meant to upload that thing as one video, which would have been about, about 55 minutes long. But uh, I understand YouTube has changed some of the rules lately to let uh, some members upload longer videos. But uh, for some reason, I tried to do that thing in high def, which made it a very, very big file. And I tried for hours to get that thing to load as, as one video and just never could work it out. And it seemed the best way to do it would be to break it down in about uh, 10 minute, uh, five to 10 minute segments and upload those. YouTube does have a real good function now for uploading where you can upload a number of videos and leave it overnight and supposedly get up the next morning they'll be all loaded. So that, that's what I did and it worked out pretty good. But anyway, enjoyed doing that and uh, seems a lot of my viewers enjoy the stories and the tales more than they do uh, anything else. So I may try to do some more of those. But I have a little something different tonight. Uh, I made a video, I don't know how many years ago, it's the most popular video I've ever made, and it's real, real short, and I don't know if you've ever watched it or not, if you've watched me for a long time, you may have seen it, but that thing went viral, and it still gets more views than anything I've put up, and when I put it up, I put it up as kind of a, a joke between or among friends, viewers that normally watch my channel, and uh, it was called, uh, Did I Video Unicorns or something like that, or I Did Video Unicorns, real short. And, uh, and I still get comments on that thing and arguments get started on that, uh, on that uh, discussion of, of that particular video about whether <laughs> unicorns are real or whether they're not. Anyway, that thing, I think it's going on toward two million views now. And uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of fun with that one. But I've got, I have something a little more realistic I wanna show you tonight. Uh, you notice my green screen is working in the background. I had a viewer the other day, uh, Jan, I believe it was, Nello Jan, a new subscriber and a new viewer. And uh, it pleases me that every so often somebody through however means will happen across my channel and they'll send me a, a message that they found it and they've enjoyed my videos and they subscribe. And, and Jan uh, did the same the other day. She subscribed and uh, she had some questions about using the green screen. I'm not going to do that on this video, but soon I will go back and, and give a demo on how to cheaply, or as cheaply as uh, uh, you possibly can without going uh, <laughs> at the professional route, which is very expensive, but doing it as a, a hobbyist like I am. You can set up a real decent green screen for not a terrible amount of money. But anyway, I'll get into that on the next video. What I want to show you tonight and talk to you about tonight is uh, a few weeks ago, I guess a couple weeks in, might have been three weekends ago, my son, my youngest son, Jeremy, uh, who lives and teaches in, in Huntsville, Alabama, just a short distance down the road, and he's the uh, father of my only grandchild, Lexa. They came up and uh, kind of want to spend the day, and uh, Jeremy has an off-road vehicle, a Jeep vehicle that uh, we've kind of worked on and got it so you can take it off-road and go in rough places. And here in this rural county, there are some uh, off the beaten path places, uh, trails that you can take a four-wheel drive vehicle on and go places that other people can't go in, maybe a, a car or a pickup. Uh, we, around here we call it the backwoods. I think down in Australia they might call it the outback and I, I don't know the names for such places. and in other places. But I've got some photographs here you'll see behind me of, I think I've got one that shows his Jeep and shows some of the, uh, it's real wooded and mountainous, mountainous back in there and a lot of pretty streams, clear water streams. And this particular area is in the northeastern part of uh, Jackson County. I've said before, you know, you've watched, I'm in northeast Alabama uh, in the county of Jackson. And this is in the northeast rural mountainous part of the county, which is one of the more wild areas in the county. There's some uh, game reserves and hunting reserves out there that cover just, just hundreds and hundreds of acres. So it's a real remote area. 
Anyway, we went back into that place. It's called, uh, you go up what they call Big Coon Valley, and there's a creek there, a Big Coon Creek, and you turn off another road, it goes Little Coon Valley and Little Coon Creek. And where we went was up Little Coon Valley and Little Coon Creek. And the road kind of follows this creek along up through the mountains, real beautiful. You'll see some pictures here. And we got out in some places, it was a nice day. So we got out in some places and the kids waited around. My uh, adopted daughter Haley went with us. So we got out and they waited around the creeks and picked up and we skipped rocks across the creek and found pebbles and pretty little things. And there's a lot of flint up in there, if you know what flint is, what the, the Native Americans used to make their uh, cutting tools and arrowheads out of. and. There were just all kind of uh, things to see up in there, bluff areas and the beautiful trees and wildlife, all kind of wildlife up in there. We saw some deer while we were out and things like that. But on one of our stops at uh, one of the creeks, matter of fact, it was out in kind of a little uh, island that had built up in the middle of a creek out of some rocks. There were a lot of river stones and pebbles and things like that had washed out of there for the last so many thousand years, like say a wild area that's never been developed much. And I ran across something here that I want to show you, and I had to pick it up and bring it back home. And I didn't think too much about it when I saw it, but now that I've uh, had it a while and looked at it, I think I may have a, a real fossil here. I'll tell you what I think I have, and I want some of you uh, to prove me wrong, or maybe tell if you know a little bit about uh, archaeology or whatever, tell me what it is instead of what I'm thinking it might be. But I'm going to entitle this video like I did the one on the unicorn, and I'm going to say, have I found a fossilized dinosaur egg? That's what I'm going to title it. And that's what I think this thing is. I'm, I'm not an archaeologist or anything, and that's just a good guess. But I want to show it to you, and uh, I guess I'll have to move the camera around. I can kind of hold it. It's on a, a piece of rock here that's about a foot wide about eight inches across and about four inches thick and it's pretty heavy but I'm gonna hold it up and let you see maybe you can see good enough right there if I can balance this thing without dropping it if you'll see right here there's a half of a shell here and a half of a shell there and you can see by my my hands what size that is it's about I guess three three and a half inches across and this is half of it, and this is half of it, half of it, and it's hollow inside. Now there's some other pieces in there too. There's one piece over here on this end that runs all the way through the fossil, comes out on the back side. And then if you look right here on the back, there's another half shell looking uh, piece that's also hollow inside. And I've looked up and from the size I've seen uh, in some of the photographs of things that have been uh, analyzed to be dinosaur eggs, this is close to the size and shape and things like that. But I'd like for you, if I can hold it a little closer, I'd like for maybe some of you people that know more about fossils than I do to tell me, look at that and maybe tell me, did I really find a fossilized dinosaur egg and it's a, a egg shell I guess you would say there's nothing inside of it maybe if it was a dinosaur egg the little critter got out and and walked away and left the shell and it buried down in this sediment and over the eons I guess you could say it has turned into a fossil well that's what I wanted to show you tonight well, an interesting thing to watch is to see what happens to these videos after they've been on for a while, a few years. Some of them start off slow and, and gain in popularity, and some of them are very pop, uh, popular when they first start off, and they'll level off, and some kind of go up and down. So that's part of the fun, is to put these things up, especially something that has a, a little bit unusual like this, and then see how it spreads and see comments. I, I get worldwide comments on the one on the unicorn. That's a lot of fun to me to sit and, and, uh, and read those things. I mean, every day I'll get, I guess 15 or 20, almost every day, uh, people comment on it and, and, the, and the viewers still keep going up and up and up. Uh, one more thing, on my last video, 
and I'm still learning and I, I still have a, a very uh, amateurish setup here I, I you know I play with it and try to make it better and I like to work on my video quality I like to work on my audio quality my last audio had some problems and I think I found that problem I use a little uh, lapel microphone kind of a little uh, hang over your ear and be close to your mouth microphone or you can use it as a lapel microphone either one and I usually use my camera in uh, what's called easy mode and that it kind of automates everything it uh, adjusts all your settings and things like that but I found a place to go in and set where my volume from the now I plug this into the uh, from the camera and run a cord over to where I am because I'm about four or five feet away from the camera, so in this room here with no draperies, no rugs, it'd be a lot of echo. So getting it close to the mouth helps that. But anyway, I found a place in the camera settings where you can manually control uh, the audio. And I think before what I had was I had uh, I had I was letting it do uh, auto control, and it was just going way too high, and it was distorting. And I know some people had trouble hearing that. And another thing I didn't do, and that was my fault too. I take my, my videos and put them into what is called Sony Vegas. You may have heard about that or you can find some things online about it. It's real good, real good uh, video edit and audio edit and software. But this microphone, the, the camera is a, a stereo, uh, st a records in stereo, but when I plug in this little auxiliary microphone, it puts this only in the left channel. So if I go back when I uh, render this, put it into the, the editing software, and tell it to take that left channel and put it both in right and left channel, then when you listen you'll hear it coming out of right and left speakers. If you have on a headset, it, you'll hear it on right and left ear. So maybe maybe that uh, will will cure that on, on this video. Hope so. So I'll cut this one off. I've gone on still a whole lot of minutes here, and that's not unusual for me, is it? And I'll uh, come back in a, a, a few days and we'll make that one on the green screen for Jan there and go on from there. And once again, I thank every one of you for your viewing, for your comments, and uh, consider everybody that, that kind of stays in touch to be uh, YouTube friends. I, I appreciate that too. Have a good evening. I didn't say it, but today is Friday, April, and I'm going to guess because I haven't looked at the calendar today. I think it's April 8th. That's just a guess. I may be off a day or two there. So, good night. Have a good evening.